the thorough analysis of the origin of species lesson 10 physical checkup of pigeon this is a commentary of chapter 1 variation on the domestication i've ever said several times before that the origin of species is a science notebook which charles darwin compiled what he observed and heard circling around the world. In order to show that organisms are not immutable but vary. Here, accepting the experimental details, biological phenomena, and research reports cited by Charles Darwin, the facts to make Charles Darwin believe the evolution will be discussed roughly and our attention will be focused on his way of thinking on the creation. The definition of domestication is to furnish foodstuffs to raise animals and plants. Charles Darwin is the first going to make observation of a domestic animal because it is technically difficult to observe the ecology of a wild life. He breeding lots of kind of pigeon could have a firm belief that all of them are from one species. The list of items which make Charles Darwin come to the conclusion that a creature varies is as follows. Difference in beaks and skulls the coranculated skin about the head, elongated eye ridges, the size of the orifices to the nostrils and tongue, a gape of mouth, habit of flying and tumbling in the air, size of foot, compaction of flock, the number of wing and tail feathers, the shape the breadth and length of the ramus of the lower jaw, the size and shape of the aperture in the sternum, the degree of divergence and relative size of the two arms of the focula, the size and shape of eggs, skin developed within the toes, etc. Charles Darwin's effort to reach the conclusion was not a light matter. It makes an impression on our mind. Evolutionists have two kinds of concepts on the evolution. Firstly, it is that everything is from a point. They assert all organisms. For example, a man, a tree, a bird, a horse, a monkey, a fail, and others were originated from one point, Big Bang, and these evolved into the present forms. But Charles Darwin didn't think in that manner. I have never met a pigeon or poultry or duck or rabbit fancier who was not fully convinced that each main breed was descended from a distinct species. So as to comprehend the previous sentence, we have to differentiate a point from a species. A point means one point, Big Bang. But the example of a species used by Charles Darwin is as follows. He said, there are at least a score of well-defined species, including subspecies, in breeders of pigeon. For instance, they are English career, short-faced tumbler, runt, barb, pout, turbid, jacobin, trumpeter, leper, etc. He was fully convinced that all are descended from a common ancestor, Columba 
Livia. Here, Columba Livia is a single species. That is, it does not mean a point. This is the very meaning of a species. The sentence all are descended from a common ancestor does not signify that pigeon, chicken, and rabbit were not from a mass point, but does that all were from a pure breed or species. The book of Genesis reads, God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kids, and God saw that it was good. The word kind is in accord with Charles Darwin's wording of species. A point is utterly different from a species. In the second place, the concept of evolutionists is not continuous, but discontinuous, as in a paramecium evolved into an ape, or an ape evolved into a man. With the fundamental sense of modern genetics, such a thing cannot be said. Charles Darwin's idea on the evolution is not discontinuous or not macroscopic. He condensed his notions into the following. As natural selection acts solely by accumulating slight, successive, favorable variations, it can produce no great or no sudden modifications. It can act only by short and slow steps. At the present time, many breeders use the principle of methodical selection with a view to develop good species. Gardeners picked out individual plants with slightly larger or a better fruit and raised seedlings from them, and again picked out the best seedlings and bred from them. Then, those many admirable varieties of the strawberry were raised. We cannot suppose that the best strawberry was suddenly produced as perfect as we now see them. Nature gives successive variations and man adds them up in certain directions useful to man. A man who intends keeping a good dog naturally tries to get as good dogs as he can and afterwards breeds from his own best dogs. Repetition of the ear's regular functions gives a desired result to a lover of dog. This unconscious selection is one of the evolutions. I finish today's lecture. See you next. Shalom.